Uh, so we made the announcement, and those of you that are watching online, obviously you're catching on replay because we had some technical challenges with our our live stream. We weren't able to live stream on the channel this morning, so the audio may sound a little different. The video may be a little different. We just thank you for hanging, connecting with us, and uh, just pray that the Lord will meet you right there where you are as well. Say this with me. I know... I the Holy Spirit has something for me. So I'm just going to come to the table, put my napkin on, get in a place of receiving with expectation, and I'm going to get my utensils out and see what He comes to say. Praise the Lord. So, we have talked about this off and on for, a, what, a month or so between Sundays and Wednesdays. And we've come, you know, Matthew 14, Mark chapter 6, and John 6 all tell this account. And where I'm coming from today is to talk about the timing of God and as it relates to uh, when God's going to move. So before we read, I just want to engage your imagination and ask you to get creative because I'm, I'm fairly confident that what I'm about to say makes no sense and that there, you, you won't be able to relate to it. So, so imagine with me, if you will, that you find yourself in a scenario, a storm or a season, where you've done your best to endure and fight your contrary winds. Mm -hmm. And you found yourself in an exhausted place. It's dark in the sense that you can't see clearly. Uncertainty's high. Anxiety's even higher. <clears throat> and in desperation, you cry out to God and ask Him, "When will this be over?" Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> Smile at someone. And tell them I know you can't relate. <laughs> but like the disciples, we really are all in the same boat. So. When will this be over? I understand that I'm in a, in, in a room full of people that for the most part have heard teaching at some level about Kairos moments. So I want you to humor me, if you will, as we talk a little bit about them today. And uh, God has been stirring me for a period of time now about the timing of God. And... The role that his timing plays in our journey. The time that we're in a test, the time that we're in a situation, the time that we're in a storm. You've heard me say it before, you probably know it, Ecclesiastes 3.1 is very powerful revelation, but I think probably we, we overlook it. Mm -hmm. Or we diminish or undervalue. How really intensely prophetic Ecclesiastes 3.1 is. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So if I just, and you know, we're going to John, or Mark, yeah, Mark 6. Where are we going? Mark, 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 I'm going to lunch in about an hour. So <laughs> Mark 6. But in Ecclesiastes 3, in fact, Judy, if you will, find it and, and throw it on the screen. Let's just... I, wanted, I want you to see it for yourself, okay? And Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Now, I understand that there are, we're not going to go through a time to this, a time to that, a time to this. There's a rhythm to that, but, but I don't want to get into that. I just want to show you Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 says, To everything there is a time. The Hebrew word for time. And again, this is a little bit elementary, but... but but where we're going with this is very important, and it's very deep. So let's be a little foundational as we get started there. The Old Covenant, you know this, was written in Hebrew. The New Covenant was mostly written in Greek. The Gospels are written in Aramaic, which was the dialect they spoke, that Jesus spoke at that time. And then it was but in the vast majority, so in, in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John... In the Gospels, sometimes the writers used Aramaic language, okay, as the foundation. But the vast majority of the New Testament 
is written in Greek. Why that matters is to get the original meaning of what the Holy Spirit was saying when he said it, you look at the original language. Look at somebody and tell them words matter. Words, matter. words have meaning. If you come away with a conviction, it needs to be that God never wastes a word and he never uses a word that is unimportant or that doesn't fit. So he is highly selective. I mean, God created all of the languages. There was one human language, and in the book of Genesis, when the event at Babel took place, God invented languages. So God speaks all languages. So when you you have to you have to ask yourself the question: Why then did God choose that word? in that language to communicate a truth to me that he wants to talk to me about. Right. It's very important that you look at it from that perspective because when you do, you know what happens? Revelation opens up. The Holy Spirit then takes wisdom, insight, revelation beyond head knowledge and begins to awaken things to you where he can begin to talk to you out of the original language as though you were the original writer he wrote it through. And this is so profound because any time God wants to create something, he speaks. Every miracle yeah. begins with a conversation That's that God right. starts. Yeah. Every, every miracle, That's every true. time of movement, every intervention, every outcome, every process, every journey, everything. Watch this. If to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, there is always a word that, that births the timing. Timing comes out of the word, or in other words, a word carries a timing with it, mm -hmm. or an appointment. Yeah. Everything God speaks has an appointment. That's why he can boldly say in Isaiah 55, My word will not return to me empty and unaccomplishing what I sent it to do. It not only has an assignment, it has an appointment. Yeah. So every word you carry that he's given you, and every word he says to you, whether he tells you or not, it has a kairos attached to it. Yes. A set time. So the Hebrew word for season literally means an appointment, a set appointment. Mm -hmm. Who sets the appointment? God does. The writer of Ecclesiastes gives us the understanding that every purpose under heaven, that means everything that God in his domain, in his realm of authority, has determined times for outcomes. It's not an accident, for example. When Joseph comes out of prison, before he went into prison, he had an appointment that he would come out of it, even though he didn't know he was going to be in it, and God didn't tell him there was an appointment while he's moving through the darkness. Look at somebody and tell him, God's got appointments with you. There are divine appointments you carry in the darkness you move through. To everything, there is a set time, is the Hebrew word. And a time for every purpose. So purposes have a time. That word means a, a moment for a fortunate experience. I, I don't think you're hearing me today. A moment or watch this in the original Hebrew language that the Holy Spirit chose to use in that verse literally says a moment when your fortunes change. Amen. Oh, to everything yeah. I'm doing in your life, there is a time for it. There are moments you're going to experience that can't be manipulated. And I didn't tell you about them. I didn't let you in on it. Mm -hmm. To everything, there is a season. This verse right here, Ecclesiastes 3.1, is governing your journey. And it's determining your outcomes under heaven. Means God saying, it's under my authority. I have scheduled this. And the enemy, the depth of the darkness, can't cancel the appointment. The enemy you're contending against can't stop what I've set up. When I open a door, no man can shut it. And by man, the inference there is no enemy. No human being and no demonic entity. No scenario. Time has to change when I say it's time for change. Yes. This verse is essential 
to your outcome. It's essential to what you're contending for. It's essential to your faith. It's essential to your journey. Yeah. And just so, how do you how do you know that, Pastor? How can you boldly, confidently tell me that? Because how many times have you tried to change things? It wasn't time for them to change yet. How did that work for you? Look at somebody and wink at them. Just wink. How did that work for you? How did that work for you? Anything born out of its appropriate season will be a calamity. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yes. If you don't believe this. Remember the journey of uh, Israel into the promised land. Oh, yeah. And God gave them instructions on what to do once they conquered Jericho. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody did something they shouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> and then when God punished them, some of the men said, Oh, we're going to go up and take this other little town called Ai right over here. And a miraculous success moment at Jericho gave way to utter thorough defeat. It's something they should have in their own strength been able to win. Because when you try to do something out of step and out of time, it's going to... How many of us have ever birthed some things? Because we thought, God, I don't need you to tell me it's not time for that. I just know. I'm tired. So I'm going to do this. And this, the rest of human history, we got Arabs persecuting Jews. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's an Isaac in your situation because you didn't trust the timing of God, Abraham. And it caused Abraham all kinds of pain. Are, are you tracking with me so far? I'm just throwing out some biblical examples. We all know what that's like. When God says it's time for change, watch this. I'm going to give you a statement, not just a rhyme, but this is a prophetic reality in the kingdom of God. When God says it's time for change, he changes your time. Wow. Yes. Mark chapter 6. Beginning in verse 45. Now, I, again, I know we've been teaching out of this. I really just, I really feel strongly today there, there is uh, there's prophetic clarity that's going to come for you out of what we teach about today. But my assignment today is to release some wisdom mm -hmm. that's going to free you up in the area of clarity. One of the things it's going to do is it's going to take some of the pressure of the anxiety you've been under off of. It's going to help settle you emotionally and give you rest. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, but today there's a word of wisdom that's moving in the room and it's going to begin moving in you. Hallelujah. Last week we got prophetic revelation and declaration. Today we're going to get prophetic wisdom. Amen. Yes. Paul talks, and this is very important, I don't want to get to sidetracked, but to the church of Ephesus, he says, I pray this for you. And to me, this is important because when the Holy Spirit includes something in Scripture, understand he, he excluded a lot of other things mm -hmm. right. to include that. And when Paul, the preeminent apostle of the New Covenant Church, says that this is what I'm praying for you, that, that is significant. Mm -hmm. yeah. It means it carries weight yeah. to it in the realm of heaven. We need to... We need to Reach for it. It needs yeah. to be an obsession. Paul says, I pray that you will receive the spirit of wisdom yeah. and revelation. So understand there is a spirit of wisdom yeah. and a spirit of revelation. Yeah. They are different. Yeah. Revel spirit of revelation is the Holy Spirit opening up the veil between you and the realm you can't see in mm -hmm. of God knowledge and what he's doing and making strong, uh, just he shows you things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The spirit of wisdom, however, is insight mm -hmm. that gives you the skill to take the revelation you've given and make it produce. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay. That's why the writer of the book of, of uh, Proverbs says the most important thing to get mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I'm pausing intensely because you're thinking. You know, you could quote the verse. You're quoting it to yourself. I want you to do something. I want you to compare what the scripture says is the most important thing to go after compared to what you have prioritized in your own life. Yeah. 
Sometimes we think we have a problem, but the real problem is we have a wisdom problem. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. The yes. problem, the circumstance is a fruit. The lack of wisdom in that area is the root. So so yeah. I could cut the fruit the, the fruit off, but the next time the season comes back. Mm -hmm. So if you want to change your outcomes, elevate your wisdom level. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So when Paul says, when Paul says, I am praying for you. By the way, if you know anything about Ephesus, you know that Ephesus was one of the most powerful, influential, effective churches in that era. It was a it was a mega church. Mm -hmm. One of Paul's most successful seasons. He spent two years there and then installs Timothy as their pastor. So when he writes the books of first and second Timothy, he's writing to the man he installed at the powerful, effective church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. YouTube is providing the offertory this yes. morning. <laughs> Did I say YouTube or U2? It sounded like a U2 riff. It, did, it does. Anyway, every time I hear that ringtone, I think about it. So, so when, he, when he says to the most powerful, effective church at that place where he, he spent more time laying the foundation for, of a, for a church in the city of Ephesus than he did anywhere else. And then he installs his son in the faith, his closest, most, most deeply mentored son in the faith, Timothy, as the pastor of that church. He says, I'm praying to you that you will receive the, the spirit of wisdom comes before the spirit of revelation. Because if I've got wisdom without revelation, I can still create successes and outcomes and, and move in the direction of God's will for my life. I can track with God in agreement because his wisdom will never contradict his will. Amen. Right. Amen. So if I could only have wisdom or revelation, I'd rather have wisdom. Because the book said it's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But Paul says, I'm praying you'll have both. I want you to be balanced. I want you to be prophetic and revelatory. And I want you to be <clears throat> profound in the depth of the wisdom of God. That means God gives you insight. Wisdom means insight and skill and the ability to put it together and master things with it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my assignment today, and as, as we move through this teaching, the spirit of wisdom is moving in this room and it's going to move in you to open things up Amen. in the sense of putting... God giving you clarity, the Lord giving you confirmation, and the Lord giving you ins insight. And here's the word of the Lord. He's giving you movement according to his wisdom. Right. Now, the wisdom of God does not make sense to the mind of, of men and women. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God's got wisdom that just, you, you just try to, you, you, you think you plan, you look at things, and you think this would be the path the Lord wants me to take. This is what he's doing. And love. But the wisdom of God says something altogether different. Yeah. Yeah. The wisdom of God says trust in the Lord with all your heart mm -hmm. and do not lean or rest or rely on your own understanding. Yep. So God's wisdom is oftentimes at odds with our understanding. Right. right. How do you bridge the gap? Faith. Mm -hmm. Faith moves you into wisdom. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the spirit of wisdom is moving yes. in this room. And this is what the Lord has come to do within us today. So Mark, four, Mark 6. So the wisdom of God sees and immediately he made his disciples in verse 45 get into the boat and go ahead of him. This passage is speaking to a change in the time they were in. Jesus changed the time the disciples were in. The word immediately, it means suddenly something, in, in the original language, it means suddenly something changed. What had just happened? Remember, they'd been on the mountain, fed five, lo five loaves and two fish, fed 5,000 people. Right? right? Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, there is an immediate unexpected change of direction that Jesus instigated. Right. Look, somebody tell them that word means Jesus changed their time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because now what is he doing? He's imploring them mm -hmm. to get into the boat. 
That word means there is a sense of urgency. In the original language, it literally meant that Jesus suddenly changed how he was behaving and talking, even how he was talking to the disciples and urged them. There was suddenly, he filled them with a sense of urgency to go ahead. Shout, that's another word related to time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Ahead, beyond. It means, in, it literally means beyond the place you're in, in both time and space. So it's physical, but it's also a timing word. Mm -hmm. And it means in the future. Mm -hmm. Immediately, Jesus changes direction with them. Mm -hmm. He changes their direction. And now there's a sense of urgency that accompanies the change of time. Now, here's the thing. Jesus knows what he's doing, but they don't. Yeah. <laughs> now they think, okay, well, the Lord just gave us a bunch of commandments on what to do with the people to feed them. So now he's given us another command and I'm going to obey the command. But it's more substantial than that mm -hmm. because he tells them to go to the other side. I want you to move. Watch this. Here's, here's what's happening. Jesus is saying there's a sense of urgency because of what I'm up to with you. There's a sense of urgency that I need to move you into a new space of time, a new timing. And I need you to make a move now. Mm -hmm. That's why the urgency. They who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. There are seasons of waiting. Mm -hmm. Be still and know that I'm God. There are seasons of waiting. Then there are other times when there's urgency. Urgency, the Lord, the Holy Spirit always assigns urgency with movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is anybody bored? No. no. Not yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> but I, I, I got to work my way through because everything, everything is all about the timing of God. Right. Yeah. The timing of God. Let me yeah. see if you're con if you found out that you're not in control of the times in your life. That when you yeah. came to Jesus, one of the one of the parts of that covenant that He didn't let you in is the fine print under terms and conditions at the bottom of the covenant yeah. is that oh by the way your times are in my hand now. Right, right. Yeah. I control your season. You need a season change. It'll change when I'm ready to change it. Yeah. Not because you fasted it, not because you prayed enough, yeah. not because you yeah. walked straight enough, not because your hair was right and your heels were clicking. It wasn't because you got everything together. It's right. because yeah. I control the times and seasons in your life. Yeah. You belong to me. Not just you, but your seasons, your times yeah. are in my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's both comforting and frightening if you think about sure. it. Right. <laughs> it's comforting to our it's it it's comforting to our faith. But it is frightening to our flesh. Yes. Now here's how. Here's another way we know this is all about the timing of God. Okay? So they do it. To the other side, to go to, ahead of him, to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he himself was sending the multitude away. And after telling them goodbye, he departed to the mountain to pray. So now they're entering into a time, they don't know it, so they physically know he's not there, right? But now they're in a time of a sense of separation. Anybody ever had to move through a time where it felt like, it seemed like, that's what I mean by sense. If somebody said, what is God doing? I don't know, but he ain't near me. <laughs> Lord, where'd you go? All right, Lord, it's okay. I'm going to trust you. It's easy to trust the Lord when the wind isn't blowing. That's true. Uh -huh. And the seas are calm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know where you're going. Yeah. And you think you know what time you're in. Right. <laughs> so he moves to the, other, to the mountain and they're headed to the other side. And when it was evening, you see that? Yeah. That's another reference to the time. Mm -hmm. See, when you begin to work through this text from a position of wisdom, you begin to understand that there are multiple. The Holy Spirit is giving us clues. Mm -hmm. And every time you turn around, there's another word or phrase that speaks to the time. You see, because, and you probably know this, but in the Jewish day, the new day began at sundown, not sun up, because in the kingdom, light always shines out of darkness. Mm -hmm. Newness always begins in darkness. I want to say that again. In the kingdom, 
You, well, Pastor, how can you say that? Well, when God be, God's cluing us in, if you look in the book, you'll get a lot of clues. But you have to look for the clues. And in the beginning, when God created, he said, let there be light. And there was light. Paul, later on, is writing and he says, God who commands light to shine out of, not into, but out of. And the evening and the morning were the so when Jesus tells them to get in the boat, see, their time just changed, but they're not paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> they're not picking up on it yet. Mm -hmm. right. He changed what he told them to do, where they were, the direction, the sense of urgency, and oh, by the way, he's doing it at the beginning of a new day. <laughs> but oftentimes, new beginnings in the kingdom will look like something is setting instead of something rising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll look like a going down instead of a rising up. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll look like a time of ambiguity and uncertainty when shadows get long and fears show up. But newness always begins with darkness. God established that can't change to everything. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That has been eternally set. It comes out of who God is because God's not in time and space. Time and space are in Him. He created it. Mm -hmm. And He had to become human so He could know what it's like to have to deal with the limitations of time mm -hmm. and space. Mm -hmm. Jesus. So one of the things Paul's addressing when he says we don't have a high priest who can't relate to the struggles in our weaknesses. Because when you go through a challenging time, it'll weaken you. Right. Amen. 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 Let's not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kairos. Mm -hmm. Hold on to that thought. Kairos. That word, that's, that's the Greek word kairos. Which is the same, carries the same meaning and intention as the words we talked about, time and season, in the Hebrew language in Ecclesiastes 3.1. Mm -hmm. So now they're, they're in a new time. And the time they're in now becomes a time of contending. Mm -hmm. yes. And when they're about three or four miles away from the land, what happens? The boat's in the midst of the sea, verse 47, and he's alone on the land. And seeing them straining at the oars... That word straining means to torment, mm. to be tormented. Mm. Mm. When you're in a time of contending, see what they didn't know was he just put, he just provoked them to, to move into a time of contending. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did he move them into a time of contending? Because he wants to teach them something, both about faith and integrating faith with the timing of God. Mm. He just did the miracle with them on with the, the feeding the 5,000 men on the mountain. But he wants to teach them something now about the timing of God that is far more profound as it relates to what he's working in them to do. You see, the time you're in right now is just a piece of the puzzle and God has orchestrated it to fit the larger landscape of future seasons he's going to move you into. Somebody tell them, now I know why this time's been so intense. Yeah. I said it a few weeks ago, but I want to remind you. We think in snapshots, God thinks in portraits. Right. right. Not most of us in here can't remember, but back in the day there was this thing called a Kodak instant camera. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Before there were smartphones, there were Instant cameras. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Nowadays, we don't have enough patience to even let the film develop as it moves its way out of the camera. <laughs> We'd be frustrated about that. But but that's what I mean by snapshot. We take a picture. Boom. We we think right now everything's full. Especially when you're in a time of contending. Yeah. When you're in a time of contending, there's an intense pressure to break the cycle mm -hmm. and get out of the wind. Right. 
and all of your senses and all of your focus and all of your emotion are intently obsessed and become consumed with getting out of that storm. What they don't know as they're contending and being tormented by the exhausting process of working their way through the beginning of a new beginning. What if we consider what I'm saying today in light of the last two years of the birth pains we've been going through in the earth? What if, what if we are in a new beginning where God's going to do some incredible things, but because we think in snapshot, not portrait, we don't realize that the darkness that set on the earth two years ago was the beginning of a new beginning, but because we expect a new beginning to look like a sun rising, not one setting, and us going through uncertainty. Oh, I'm preaching now. You're listening now, too. I can tell. So are you seeing this? I'm just, I, again, I'm laying a foundation, trying to be methodical, because I want you to see it. Because as you see this, the wisdom of God's going to help you see. It's going to give you the skill to see into from a place of perception the battles that you're in. I'm talking to people today who've been living in a state of contending. So now here we have. They're being tormented. That word means to torment, to vex, to harass. Watch this. Their response, according to Mark, their response to try to work their way. What are they trying to do? They're trying to change the time they're in. Mm -hmm. They just don't know it. And the time they're in has been tormenting them. Mm -hmm. It's been hard. It's been harsh. Mm -hmm. And it seems and feels like they are off track. Sometimes when you've heard from the Lord prophetically, and this if I were teaching prophetic principles of, of how to interpret prophetic words and how they come to pass in our life, this is a great model for that because you see the pattern of promise, process, promotion. Or conviction, crisis, conquest. That's a, that's a prophetic principle. You can't change it. We can't undo that. But for those who have been in a state of contending that came on the heels of God giving you conviction, confidence, or a knowing, and you feel like now, now you're, you're way off track and it's causing you to be tormented by the question of, God, did I miss you to begin with, or did I misunderstand, or did I apply a personal preferential interpretation to something you said that what you said was legit, but I didn't hear it and interpret it correctly? Right. If you do not have that problem, come up here now and get some oil, get, get your hands greased up, and lay them on the rest of us. I mean, think it through. Can you imagine what the disciples if they had a moment to think, could you imagine the questions that must have been swirling at the, as the winds were swirling around them and the waves were crashing onto that boat? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You said, go to the other side. Yeah. And when you said it, there was peace. And when you said it, there was still some daylight. And none of what we're experiencing now looks or feels anything like you see, you gave me a word, and your word's the reason I'm in trouble. Yeah. Now, where are you? <laughs> what they don't know is it's a timing thing. That's why I've been saying over, over the most recent season and why I posted that video on, on, on Thursday. You can trust the timing of God. You may look at somebody and tell them you may not be able to trust your way to work your way through. You may not be able to trust yourself. Here, here's what I mean with this. Four of these 12 men, 25% of them, were experienced professional commercial fishermen. 
And not only could they not work their way out, they now feel like they're moving off track. Anybody feel like you used to have a future you thought God was going to move you into and, and now you look at where you are and what you're going through and the journey itself and, and you feel like, well, I'm never getting there. <laughs> I'm way off target from where I thought I'd be. I just heard the Lord say, don't worry, my wisdom is going to solve your problem. Amen. And prophetically, what that means is you're going to begin experiencing Kairos moments where the wisdom of God, a word of wisdom, comes to you. It's going to come in you. And suddenly you're going to have a wisdom, wisdom solution Amen. for what has seemed to be an unsolvable problem. Mm. And that's, it's going to change things because that's going to be an indication that God is changing the time you've been in. Amen. You've been contending to come into a change of seasons that you can't change. That's right. mm -hmm. That's right. Because your times are in his hand and to everything, to every divine appointment, to every word you carry, there is a divine appointment to it. And that word cannot return to God, having failed its assignment. Amen. Isaiah 55, 11. It will not return to me a failure. In the original Hebrew, the word says it literally cannot fail. The word God sends out with an assignment comes back to give an account for the assignment it carried. So Jesus has done this with them on the lake and now they're contending and he's just standing back watching and you know what they're not aware of as they're being emptied in the darkness and the contending they're doing they are watch this they are moving through time to a time change they don't know they're moving to because when he comes to them when does he come to them the fourth watch of the night between 3 and 6 a.m you know what that means in their contending, they've been cycling through a period of time to get to the place where the time changes. Here's what I mean by that. What's happening? God has set some things in place and in order that no matter what we're going through, that can't be changed. One of those is, for as long as the earth remains... It will be seed, time, and harvest. You can't, you can't have time or harvest without sunlight. And so they're tormented, they're pressured, they're stressed. They're, they don't know that why they're going through this is because of the time and the timing of God over their life. And what they can't see is that they are coming out of the harsh darkness they've been in because it's time. So Jesus coming to them, walking on the water between 3 and 6 a.m., the Son of God <laughs> is moving toward them. Look at somebody and tell them something dynamic is emerging out of the darkness. Something dynamic. Something dynamic is emerging out of your darkness. For God who commands light to shine out of... I am the way, the truth, and the light. I'm the life, I'm the truth, I'm the way. What is he doing? He's modeling truth. The truth is the time you've been in can't destroy you or change where you're headed. Right. The truth is I'm changing your time. I'm making a way. This is the way. Walk in it. That's why he's not going to come to the boat intending to he intends to keep moving forward yes. what is that I am the way mm -hmm. right. I'm making a way through the time you've been in and the truth is I'm changing the time you've been in and I am the life you will not die here you will not die in this yeah. 
this season is not season for demise. Something is emerging out of the darkness. The spirit of wisdom holds on to that and looks for it. That's why Peter in Matthew 14 says, Lord, if that's really you. He's not questioning Jesus. He's not saying, if that's really you, because Jesus wouldn't have honored doubt. It's when he began to doubt, after he's already moving in a miracle, that he begins to sing. Wisdom sees a door of opportunity in spite of the crisis you've been in and understands that the crisis doesn't diminish the legitimacy of the opportunity. So here again, we have the timing of God being a factor in this story. But just off the top of my head, this is the fourth thing in the text that speaks directly to the timing of God. It's not a coincidence that the Son of God is emerging in their line of sight as the sun is getting ready to emerge over the horizon. And he's intending because I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and oh, by the way, I'm the light of the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so, look at somebody and tell them we're almost done almost with done. the 47th verse. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're, I want to fast forward. We know the, I want to go down to the 51st verse because we know the rest of the the story as it were and he got into the boat with them and the wind what does Jesus do or say to the wind to make it stop look at the book don't 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 assume and don't take other times where in the, in the Gospels, in different scenarios and seasons, he rebuked the wind. What does he do here? He just shows up. Now, you can't step into a boat, watch this, without changing where you are. Here's what I mean. He's got to cross a threshold. Furthermore, he's got to step up. Because the side of the boat is elevated above the level of the water, right? Right? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he's got to cross over. And I'm working real hard here to get you to see this. I want you in your imagination to see Jesus stepping out of the darkness at the time when the sun's beginning to rise. Okay? And what is he doing? He's crossing from one state of being, that's the water, into the boat. And when he gets in the boat, what happens to the wave and the, and the wind? When, when he steps into the boat, what happens? The time changed. Why? Because when he steps into the boat... He crosses over into new territory, and it, his behavior is a way of saying, I just changed the season you've been in. Mm -hmm. He doesn't speak to the wind. This is another way. This is now the fifth or sixth. In, this, in four passages, in four or five verses, we have five or six times when the Lord is going out of his way to say, it's a timing thing, it's a timing thing, it's a timing thing. I've got the times in your life in my hands. Mm -hmm. And when I say it's time, watch this. When I say it is time for change, I will change the time and what was will no longer be. Amen. Now, I want to throw, I want to throw an, an addition to this. Matthew and Mark and John, all three, in Matthew 14, Mark 6, and John 6, all give an account of this. They all give different angles to it. Matthew tells us that Peter walked on water. Mark tells us that when Jesus steps in the boat immediately. Where, where does that word appear 
in addition to here, where does it appear in the story? When Jesus initially told him, immediately he changed the season that got him in the storm. Immediately he changed the season in the storm. And the storm stopped. John now tells us something else. In John's account of this story, he said that when Jesus got in the boat, immediately, that word literally means without a delay mm -hmm. in space or time. Because according to Mark and Matthew, they're about four or five miles from the shore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the, of, of the Sea of Galilee. How do you go <laughs> from the middle of the lake... Immediately, you don't unless Jesus changes the season. Mm -hmm. Now, so the question is asked, why do, why do Matthew, Mark, and, and John not all share the same detail about that? Because each one of them had a different assignment from the Holy Spirit to bring a different place of perception and, and understanding because they had different audiences. That's right. The other beautiful thing about that is we, we can all, in fact, Matthew and John lived that experience. Mm -hmm. And the wisdom of God can give us specificity in terms of what he's saying for each of us. Right. That may not be the same thing right. he gives somebody else. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But he changed their season. So what is all of this about? This is about this immediately of the wind ceasing and immediately of them being at the other side where they were headed, John said. The place he covenanted with you to move with you to before the chaos showed up. So kairos, a kairos moment is the Greek word for the set time for certain things to happen. It's the Hebrew, it's the Old Testament equivalent in the New Testament of a time for a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Times when certain things happen that would not happen before. Mm -hmm. Time for God to do things because he's appointed them and they have to happen and they can't be stopped. Mm -hmm. Amen. They had to get to Bethsaida. Mm -hmm. Yes. It looked like and felt like and seemed like they were off track. And in the middle of that, they're dealing with a lot of negative things. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus changed their season, even their location shifted instantly. Yes. Yeah. The timing of God. So here's the cool thing about this. The word time, T-I-M-E, appears 104 times in the New Testament. 86 of those times, it's the word kairos, not chronos which means history. Yes. It means the natural order of human events, chronos. We get the word chronological from that. It's a time things occurred. I had breakfast at 8.30. I brushed my teeth at 8.46. I went through this trial in 2018. That's chronos. I have an appointment with my doctor next Tuesday at 4.30. That's Kronos. God showing up and saying, I'm changing your season. And breakthrough or outcomes happening that you have been contending but can't make happen. That's Kairos. That yes. is the set time for divine appointments yes. that you don't even know that you carry. Yes. These men knew they were headed to the other side, but they didn't know that they were in a test because of the timing of God. And Jesus is trying to teach them something about timing that would give them hope. Right, right. Because you have some Kairos moments that you're going to begin experiencing. Set times for certain things to happen because God has scheduled them. Mm -hmm. And God's going to change your time because it is time for change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when Kairos, so here's the great thing about Kairos moments they move us to places we can't get to by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Kairos mm -hmm. moments come because heaven's 
favor kisses your life. And like the woman from Shunem, you come into a room not even knowing that the pathway's already been prepared. And you want to see a Kairos moment? Look at a woman who happens at the right time, not even knowing it's happening, to come to live out of a desire of a dream she's kept alive in her aloneness for seven years. And she comes into that moment just to ask for her stuff back, not knowing that God has already put a question and a curiosity in a king's mind and moved it from his mind to his mouth yeah. and he's got the right person there to have the right conversation yeah. Yeah. because when yeah. it is time for Cairo's moments to begin emerging and happening out of the darkness you've been in mm -hmm. right. there are things that begin to happen watch this that move you from one state of being to another Instantly, the wind stopped. The Bible doesn't say it died down. You go from nothing to something. You go from dark to light. You go from chaos to calm. You go from fear to peace. In a moment. Now, Pastor, why, why, why are you talking about this? Because you have been contending. The wisdom of God is to let you know that you have been contending because of the quality of some Kairos moments that are ahead of you. And when are they going to happen? I don't know. I'm not God. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Don't look for them, but expect them. Right. Because <laughs> you know what happens when you start looking for Kairos moments? <laughs> they don't come. Why don't they come? Did, did my looking for them cancel them or change God? No. It just frustrates you because you'll never see a Kairos moment coming. They are the surprise suddenlies of God that shift things. Joseph, if you know his story, has been in prison for a number of years. He's 11 years into a 13-year process that he does not know it was going to take 13 years to come into. And in fact, <laughs> in fact, see, when you are in a time of contending... You're, watch this. You're not contending to get the outcome you're believing for. You're contending because God has already appointed that outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The contending is the price you pay to come into the Kairos. The contending is the cost associated with the blessing. Mm -hmm. So Joseph at 17 has the dreams. For seven years, the woman had to leave everything that mattered to her except for her immediate family and live as a stranger in a strange place, disconnected from her people, disconnected from her land, disconnected from her money, disconnected from everything that had any emotional or financial value to her. All of her dreams and hopes, not just for her life, but for her family in the future, are connected to that property. You can't tell me that didn't frustrate her. You can't tell me there wasn't just a little bit of elevated stress. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned last Sunday, she didn't go to the prophet. She goes to the king. Because mm -hmm. she doesn't have a prophetic word. Elisha told her, go live wherever you can. There's a famine coming on the land for seven years. He doesn't give her a prophetic word. Oh, thus saith the Lord. I shall restore unto thee everything that is thine, saith the Lord. <laughs> She doesn't have that level of clarity. So she's contending in a state of disconnectedness to keep a dream alive. Not knowing there's a Kairos moment. That's one of my favorite miracles in the whole Bible. Because it, all you see is the fingerprint of God and every small detail of everything she's stepping into has already been orchestrated by God. From before the foundation of the world, he was the lamb slain. Don't you dare think he doesn't already have appointments to keep with you. Amen. From before the foundation of the world, before you ever came into the storm, he already appointed the moment he'd show up and change the season that's calmed the storm. So Joseph at 17 gets these dreams. And everything he begins to go through for the next 13 years. See, he kind of sees, he gets a picture. He gets revelation, but he doesn't have wisdom. Yeah. 
And if you study the book of Psalm or you study the Psalms, Psalm 105 talks about that God raised Joseph up to teach Pharaoh's senators wisdom. He becomes a mentor, a counselor, and a prophetic coach to the Egyptian Senate. He didn't see that when he's 17 and he sees stalks of wheat falling down and worshiping his. And when he gets that insight, God doesn't tell him he's going to go through darkness. That's right. Because newness begins with darkness. And he doesn't tell him it's going to be dark for 13 years. And when he thinks he sees a light at the end of the tunnel, it's going to get darker. God didn't tell him that. But in the darkness, he's growing in wisdom. That's leading him to the change of season. So he meets the butler and the baker. And you know the story. And I'm wrapping this up with this. You know the story. He prophesies to them. Their outcomes. Because he can interpret their dreams. Yeah. By the way. He cannot pr accurately interpret specificity. At 17. Like he can now that he's been a slave and a prisoner. Mm -hmm. He's growing in wisdom. Yes. This is why Jesus has them on the lake. He's trying to help them grow in the wisdom of God as it relates to his timing and faith. Oh, thank you, Lord. And so the scripture says that the butler forgets Joseph. And then it came to pass at the end of two full years. The timing of God cuts things off that have been hindering your arrival where he's moving you to at the end that word in Hebrew means to cut off to disconnect it almost as if Joseph it's a word speaking to Joseph chains in that dungeon the timing of God cut those chains and he's got a kairos moment in that darkness he does not know he has and at the end of two full years, it came to pass that Pharaoh dreamed a dream. Kairos moments begin orchestrating the thoughts, plans, and intentions of other human beings that God will work through to orchestrate the outcome he's covenanted to bring you into. Amen. He does it with Joseph. He does it with David. How long will you grieve for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him as being king over Israel? Get up! Begin to think differently. Begin to look for possibility, Prophet Sam, because I've got another plan, and I need you to begin get on board with this plan and begin to think in portrait, not in snapshot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, you, you. I need to, I need to change your focus because I'm, I'm changing the timing, and I'm setting up times and seasons that are down the road. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create an anointing now that hasn't existed before. I need you to fill your horn with oil and go. Mm. In the middle of Samuel's grief, God gives him a Kairos moment that creates movement in his life and gives him hope. And it is through that that when David stands before him, he sees the future. And there's a prophetic declaration that changes the histories of nations that come out of Samuel's mouth. Because the timing of God. David doesn't know that while that's going on with Samuel and he's out there dealing with the rejection of his family and keeping his father's sheep. He's got a Kairos moment. Think of this. He leaves the house that morning. Just like every other morning in his kind of frustrating, limited life. Because <clears throat> you know the story of how his brothers and father didn't think anything of him and harassed him and persecuted him. He's living in a dysfunctional family. He's not valued for who he is. Yet as a shepherd personally, and eventually out in those sheep folds, God was building his identity. Mm -hmm. God was kissing his life, and he knew he was made for more than where he was. But he can't make it. He can't make the change happen. Mm -hmm. So God changes the direction of a prophet mm -hmm. by giving the prophet a Kairos moment. Mm -hmm. And then David walks out that morning or that night or however many days before he had walked out the front door to go to the sheep pen and pull the sheep out and lead them to pasture. Not knowing the next time he crossed that threshold, everything would change. Mm -hmm. Not knowing the next time he crossed that threshold. Mm -hmm. Thresholds of pain are giving way to thresholds of promotion. Mm -hmm. Thresholds of promise. Thresholds of purpose. Mm -hmm. Thresholds of possibility that exceed what you thought you heard God say. Mm -hmm. 
When the disciples were on the boat and they heard Jesus tell them, get in the boat, go to the other side. Do you think they thought all of that was going to happen? And then all of a sudden, here comes Jesus walking on water. Look at somebody and tell them, a Kairos moment is about to show you something you've never seen in your life. Hallelujah. Do you think when David walked out of his house and crossed that threshold, he thought the next time he crossed it that he would step into destiny and that a Kairos moment would be standing in his living room and everything would change. Do you think that the widow woman from Shunem thought when she came to call out to the king to get her stuff back, to get her family land back, that she would be instantly granted seven years of wage restitution. <laughs> Kairos moments mm -hmm. change our state of being. Right. And for those that have been living in a state of contending, you've been contending because of the Kairos Hallelujah. that's coming. Hallelujah. Set times Hallelujah. of divine appointments. Hallelujah. And those who have struggled to survive, there's a thriving ahead of you. That is a, it is a, it's at a level of God's best that greatly exceeds the struggle for survival you've been in. Joseph knows there's a lot more in him than the prison he's in. But he can't get himself free. Think about it. What are the things that you're in the scenarios, the circumstances. What are the things that are maybe in you? Fears, anxieties, thoughts, negative emotions. Stuff you're fighting in your inner life that nobody's aware of. And something at a deeper level in you knows this is not God's best for me. And I don't know how and I can't work it out. But somehow, someway, there's a day when God's going to show up and open a door. Who am I talking to? Yeah. Yes, this is what Joseph's going through yeah. in that dark prison. And after two full years, when in Psalm 105, verse 19, it said they, his soul was in iron. Mm -hmm. He was imprisoned in his soul, not just his body. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Pharaoh has a dream. Mm -hmm. Cairo's moments will cause pagans to open doors Amen. for God's Amen. people. Amen. Kairos moments change the state of being that you've been living in. And so we know what happens. Not only does Pharaoh have a dream, but the butler's memory gets unblocked. See, Kairos moments also serve to remove barriers and hindrances. Why? Because it is now time for certain things to happen that you couldn't make happen because it wasn't time for them. Right. Jesus said healing is the children's bread. Kairos moments belong to the sons and daughters of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Kairos moments belong. Set times for certain things to happen related to purpose Related to promise, related to process. God's about to make some moves in your life. Look at somebody and smile at them and tell them God's about to make some moves. The Lord is about to make some moves in your life. In Kairos moments, you're going to you're going to stumble into some things that you weren't researching. To come into. Here's a, here's a unique thing. It's like I hear the word research. You've been searching and searching and searching. For solution after solution after solution. And the searching hasn't produced uh, solutions. It's produced frustration. And the wisdom of God. <laughs> is causing some things to research for you. Oh Lord. I almost feel an unction real strong right here. You're going to be sought out because you are not forsaken. Even as Samuel sought David, 
even as Pharaoh sought Joseph, you're going to be much sought after. Because God's going to cause there to be a research that causes you to be discovered. This is a season for the discovery of what God has been building in you. And change, dramatic, drastic, fantastic change is coming into your life because of the Kairos moment that, that you have been contending very intensely. Not knowing you're contending for that Kairos. Mm, taisima mashebeliasa. Look at somebody and tell them, your night won't last forever. Your night won't last forever. forever. The Lord says you've been hid for a season, but the time of your appearing is at hand. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. The timing of God's going to untangle you. The timing of God is going to promote you. The timing of God is going to change how you've been relating to what even, I mean, emotionally, perception-wise, to what you've been thinking God was doing with your life. Mm. And you're going to discover, now he's doing something so much better mm. than what I even thought. Hallelujah. Hmm. And the trap the enemy thought he laid for you. It's going to lose its teeth. That's right. And the trap won't snap. <clears throat> the Kairos moments of God. <laughs> like fruit falling from a tree. The Kairos moments of God are going to begin to fall from heaven and show up as opportunities and breakthroughs Hallelujah. that you're going to step into. They're coming to where you are. Because even though it seems like you are so far out of position, you're right where the season needed you to be. Amen. Smile at somebody and tell them, God is going to blow your mind. And the demons and the darkness and the principalities will not have God's harvest in the earth and the nations of the earth that are shaking and trembling. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give, I'm going to give, this is Susi Bandro. I don't know if I said this before, but I just instantly, I just feel this stirring again. Very strongly. And we as God's people are called to be a prophetic company that sees differently and does not give in to fear. Mm -hmm. And if you're consuming too much news... Yeah. And media, stop it. It's yes. distorting your perception. Yes. And what we're seeing is not even legitimate. No. What we're seeing isn't real. And it will cause you to surrender. Yes. God said, I'm going to have my way amongst the nations. This nation shall hear the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. God hasn't roared yet. He has not done yet. God, there, there may be battles, but with battles come victories. With battles come successes. Get your mind off of the darkness and begin looking for light. For what you look for, you will see. I feel a stirring and an unction about this. And frankly, I gotta I, I want to be careful because there's a there's a prophetic flow that's that's I feel an anointing prophetically on this. But I'm gonna tell you something. I've got to give you a word of wisdom about it, and that is this. There are the, the house of God, the house of faith is a divided camp. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That God didn't send this division, but he's working through it for us to, to expose things and for us to look and see where we are. And so you're either going to fall into the camp of fear and negativity and giving. Get, stop looking for the Bible prophecy experts to give you answers. God's given you wisdom. God says, I'm not done. And how can you be light if you're not looking for any? That's right. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. Amen. 
We're prisoners of hope, not gloom. We're prisoners of victory. Our God's the God of resurrection. And I'm not giving up until God says quit and change your direction. I'm not giving up until God says it's over. And we are to be a people through whom God can be prophetically hopeful. We speak life to death. We speak light to darkness. We command the chaos to come into order. We refuse to surrender nations and destinies of peoples to darkness and say, well, it just must be the enemy's will. We don't sit down passively. We, we don't vacate the seven mountains. We take territory. We don't retreat from it. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but you need to get your head out of the news and let the Spirit of God come alive in you. For these are the days, even as the nations roar, God said, I want to bring my kingdom to get to bear and bring kingdom authority and kingdom life and kingdom peace to, to political spheres. For I will speak even to those who think they control the destinies of nations and the outcomes of men. But I say, I am God. Is not the earth and its fullness mine? I am looking for a people, a tribal people, who will take territory back and will not cede it to the darkness. Amen. Amen. So it's dark. Look for a new beginning. Hallelujah. Harshness precedes heaven showing up. Our king is coming. Amen. Those gates yes. are opening up. Yes. But we have to speak to them. Yes. Be lifted up. Let the king of glory come in. <laughs> Lord, come into this nation. Come into the nations of the earth. Yes. Come into everywhere where there's, there's uproar and upheaval. Yes. And every prophetic covenant you have with founding fathers of nations and with apostles and prophets and men and women of various nations who've been contending. And Lord, remember every one of your prophetic decrees. For out of the darkness, newness yes. shall emerge. Yes. Yes. Who lied by the rose? You need to say it right now. I will not be driven by fear. I will not allow my perception to be distorted by media manipulation. We are living in an era of heavy propaganda, but yet we've been given an anointing. And that same anointing that gives us insight into the scripture will preserve us as we move through and will shape our perception. Whose report are we going to believe? Lord have mercy. It's almost like I just feel God passionate about this. Can I be good? When it's dark, Isha Podraba, Tedabo Did I not say I would give you Goshen while you were waiting for your Exodus? Who will rise? And allow me to fill them with prophetic expectation and prophetic authority. For I am looking for a company of people who will be bold and courageous and believe me to do exploits through them. Who will believe that the darkness changes nothing concerning what I have said to them. Hmm. Taitotu. Lord, we just bless you and thank you. Ah, okay. I pray for an infusion of courage. Lord, let crazy courage rise up in us and let it stiffen our spines. Throw off the yoke of fear. Throw off the tyranny of the fear of demise. Can I not bless you supernaturally? Can I not kiss your economy personally with my best? Can my favor not come upon you just because there's inflation and gas prices are high and wars and rumors of wars? Let your hearts not be troubled. You are of another spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we are. 
Tiba bobo papa kumasha, pokada ba seko shede, kuba kabanko man kaya, leno kundizi karando do robo shende, vren sun tandai vindrospe, shinba da shendroshe. The beginning of an era of miracles always starts off harsh. I say to you, don't look to escape, look to occupy. That's right. Oh, amen. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here's what the Lord is saying to us. The Lord is saying to this Lord have mercy. The Lord is saying that we are to be like the woman from Shunem. Concerning concerning personal matters and also concerning our nation. Mm -hmm. And and I'm never going to back down or apologize mm. for speaking to the United States and speaking about it. And here's yes. why. Yes. Because part of the calling and my assignment and my responsibility before God is I carry something in me authoritatively to be part of the reformation of this country yes. prophetically. Come on. And the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, we are, to, we are to see our country like the woman from Shunem saw her property. Mm -hmm. There were people who had occupied it, but she knew that she had the heavenly authority to occupy and come into restitution. Yeah. And we we're in a season of crisis and upheaval or upheaval in this nation, and there are people illegitimately occupying. Yes. But the Lord yeah. said the outcome yeah. for America is up to how my people will respond yeah. to the authority and the assignment I've given them. And if you will rise up and reach for it, you will take your nation back. For I have not taken my hand off of your nation it's just that you're contending against the occupiers yes. but I shall occupy and you shall drive them out and take the territory that I said belongs to you covenantally I need a people I need a people who will not surrender to the quote end times and the antichrist in terms of your eschatology but that you will look for me in the now and say God wants to move I want to move with him Pedro Santo Stato Situkuba. Well, well, we may offend somebody. Listen, if they can't come to the light of the truth, we don't have any fellowship with them. Pastor, we're supposed to heal and unite. Jesus said, I've come to bring a sword. There are times. Listen, you can't compromise with evil. People sitting in churches came claiming to be Christians, not only will they stand for abortion, but now they'll stand for men changing their sex to a woman. God made Adam and Eve. We need to be clarion. There is a dividing line in the house of God, and we cannot compromise in the name of saving people's feelings. We have to stand up and say, no, I'm not going to propagate or eliminate silently, tacitly agree with by keeping silent just because I don't want to hurt you. Baby, sometimes you need to come face to face with the knowledge of the truth and realize it is time that if we are going to save souls and reap harvest, we can't do it accommodating cultural rot. Well, they may leave. Well, they weren't here to begin with. If you're not for me, you're against me, Jesus said. I'm not talking, talking about personally. I'm talking about if we're not with him, for his truth, we're not with him. That's right. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. How can two walk together unless they're in agreement? If you're not in agreement. If you're not in agreement with the headship you're under spiritually. You will never reap from it. That it will not right. profit That's you. True. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Hallelujah. And there's so much division. You see, as Christians, you know what we'll do? We'll surrender our destinies in the name of, quote, misunderstanding what love is. Mm -hmm. oh, boy. Yeah. We'll just give the territory up to the devil. Yeah. 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 
God's saying, take it, take it. It's yours, take it. I gave that house to you. I gave that land to you. I gave you your son back. That's a generation of the future. And if there was recovery on you before, there's still recovery on you now. My people carry the seed of resurrection, but they've got to go to battle over what belongs to them. Hallelujah. We're too quick to surrender. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Amen. We got to be a people. You tell the truth in love, but yeah. you don't compromise the truth in the That's name right. of love. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. We don't do that. Yeah. We can't yeah. do that. And if God's caused, called you mm. to do something, your allegiance is to Him, not to people's opinions. That's right. Amen. 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 If you have to compromise truth to make any relationship work, mm -hmm. you're not in a relationship. You're in surrendership yes. Yes. to Amen. the wrong headship. That is, yes. that is true. true. Oh my God. It just is what it is. Yes. Right. Yes. I've come through. I, I understand too much how powerfully miraculous God is and that God never needs a, a majority to agree with him. Right. And long as I agree with God and he's in a, and I'm in agreement with his truth and that covenant, I don't need other people That's in part. Right. In yeah. fact, God, sometimes God cuts people away from us because yeah. they want to mess it up. They want to mix it up. And God said, no, I want you. I want to do this exclusively yes. with you. And so I need you to believe me and be faithful to the assignment I have put yes. upon your life. Yes. And if other people walk away from that, bless them as they yes. go. Mm -hmm. And thank me for moving them. Amen. Yes. Amen. Seriously. Yes. Hey, Pastor, what are you referring to? I'm not, there's nothing going on with me personally or with this church. It's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. I'm saying as a prophet to this nation yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. that yeah. we are in times as Christians, we need to steal our spines and we be loving and kind but we do not use that as an excuse to not speak the That's truth right. or to be so afraid somebody's going to get offended and leave us mm -hmm. yep, yep. that we shut our voices. Yes, you got it. I do nobody a favor if I do not speak That's what God right. puts in my mouth. Amen. Same with you. Amen. God gives you something to give someone and you're afraid it may be a little confrontational. Mm -hmm. oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and you be quiet. Jesus. There's an entire series of miracles or outcomes that now don't happen because you didn't speak. That's right. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. So, so, Jesus, Lord. So there are some relationships that are going to begin to change. There are some people God's going to begin. There have been some ministries even that have kind of been in your heart that you've been fond of. And you're going to begin hearing and seeing some things that... that it's like God's going to begin opening some things up to you that, that don't sit well with you. And you need to trust your judgment. Yes. Amen. You need to trust the witness of the Holy Spirit in you. And I'm not talking about getting offended in your flesh or not liking the personality. I'm talking about at a level of spirit witness. You're going to begin recognizing this is not what God... I, I can't, I'm not in alignment with this. And if I'm not in agreement with it, I can't journey forward with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Amen. God wants to protect you from what's not healthy for you. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's good. Come on. Furthermore, we all have weak spots. Yes, we do. And God knows that sometimes we would compromise, not out of sin, but out of trying to making a situation work. When God said the season for that situation is over, I've changed that time. And if you try to maintain that season, nothing's going to work. There will be no grace on that. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. That is so good. So don't be afraid. Amen. To make crucial decisions you need to make because the Spirit of God begins to give you wisdom about some things. Right. Right. Amen. Very good. Thank you. But to my dying breath, as long as God gives me breath, I am not giving this nation up to the devil. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. 